Hey Bananas, I'm Michael Cost, and welcome to my sixth IG live chat. I'm super excited. I know I haven't uh, done a chat in two weeks now, so I'm really excited to be back with the chats to do them. Today I'm going to be joined by an incredible human being, Joe Human, um, and we're going to be talking about evolution due to COVID-19. I think it's a very interesting uh, subject and it's a very um, big subject to tackle, especially in the live stream. Uh, so I'm really excited to have him with me. I'm just waiting for him to join the chat. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be talking from the macro to the micro and um, really dive into how the world has changed and how it will change due to COVID-19. So let's wait for him to join us. So this is going to be an interactive chat uh, with you guys as well as Joe. Uh, so if you have any questions, make sure you go to the question little icon on the bottom of the screen and type out your question and we'll answer it during the conversation. So we're just connecting to Joe now. Hey man. Hey man, how are you? Good and you, good to have you. Alive. Thank you, thank you for having me. This is pretty cool. Uh, so look, look, Joe's, Joe's been a uh, Mr. Livestream this week. Uh, you know, I've gone Instagram, Joe's live, Joe's live, Joe's it's live. It's <laughs> how has your week been? It's been awesome, man. Uh, and I guess one of the things that I've really enjoyed is just being able to chat about so many different things that are really not um, around like the work that I do in terms of like um, digital marketing or branding. So it's been very cool um, to sort of like step out of that comfort zone, you, you know, to be able to chat to different people about different things and still sort of bring it back to everything that's like happening around um, the country and the world right now. So yeah, I've I've had an interesting week, so many lives, uh, but I've I've enjoyed every every minute, and I'm excited. This is it's it seems like a very nice Friday afternoon. You know, um, the sun's out, the weather's pretty yeah. chill, and yeah, we're here. Yeah, not How so been... cold in Joburg today, thankfully. No, not at all. How's your week been? <laughs> yeah, my week's been good. Also hectic with deadlines, uh, but really good. Work heavy work week, and yeah, um, even like though it was only a three day work week, a hundred meter away from your office. Say again, you're the one that's like a hundred meters away from your office, yeah, yeah. Because I, I remember yeah. when you told me to come at the office, I'm like, this guy's still working, yeah. <laughs> and when we were talking about it, it was also like late at night, it was 11 30 at night, exactly. um, and you were like, but. Uh, what do you mean you're still at your office? I hope you're like working from home or socially distancing. Yeah. Um, but yes, no, I am 100 meters away from my office. So I'm, I'm always at work, actually. Cool. Cool. <laughs> Never cool. on a break. Joe, I want you to introduce yourselves to um, everyone who's watching. Who are you and what do you do? Um, wow. That's, I hate this question. Um, <laughs> I... You know, I do so much to a point where sometimes I don't even know what I do anymore. Uh, but <laughs> in, 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 a, in a more simpler uh, sort of um, way to, to put it together, I think um, while Joe is, is a creative entrepreneur, um, I am um, Congolese born and I was raised in South Africa. I moved here when I was literally like seven years. And um, always been a very young creative at heart. You know, was always into like painting and drawing, and eventually, when I reached grade ten, that's when I decided to like take art as an actual subject. So I so I did visual arts from grade ten, um, matriculated, got into MGI, and couldn't finish my studies because my parents could just not afford it anymore. So I had to sort of um, get out into the world and start fighting for myself, and yeah, got a job very shitty space um but look it paid the bills and yeah i was <clears throat> i was a creative um director and senior designer there at a retail company so i did a lot of their um, sort of like their marketing and um digital sort of work and in feb the following year <clears throat> my business partner now 
um, Elliot got hired and we both just clicked, you know, we both had the same vision for seeing how best African brands can actually communicate because we've got so much um, talent, diversity, you know, color, people in our continent and all these experiences are not being pumped into our brands and our, and our narrative. So we decided to start our digital agency, which is called Creative Mindspace. And we've been running for about four years now. And yeah, it, it's, it's, it's done really well uh, in terms of just being able to help small businesses and African brands understand their narrative and build themselves. But beyond that, um, we sort of started branching out into just doing our own things. So for me, I was really passionate about branding and communication. So I started speaking a lot about that on social media. I started helping a lot of um, personal brands also um, discover themselves and their messaging and how they want to like portray themselves online. And he went into more um, arts and you know, buying art, c collecting art. So I guess um, that's sort of where we are right now, where we've, we started branching out into doing so many different other things outside of our businesses. And yeah, it, 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 it has got me here, man. You know, um, made the Forbes list, um, made the top 20 under 25 list, you know, being featured on different publications and, and interviews and TV and, and all the stuff. And just really building a community of people that um, understand and are passionate about, um, you know, digital marketing, um, influencer marketing, creative, whatever it could be that has to sort of fall under the branding cap. Um, and that's and that's pretty much what I've done. You know, I'm, I'm a podcaster, I'm a writer, uh, I'm a creative at heart. Yeah. Oh, no, that's awesome. That's awesome. So uh, let me introduce myself for perhaps some of the people, your people who don't know who I am. So my name is Michael Cost. I'm a content creator and a digital marketer. And I created IG Live Chats before the pandemic, before national yeah. lockdown. Um, and it's all about getting uh, other creative uh, people in the digital space, digital entrepreneurs, uh, content creators on my live stream where we have formal discussions and we just talk about things that, um, you know, are quite relevant and try and give uh, value to the people who are watching, you know. Mm -hmm. And you said in one of your live streams um, uh, during the week how, uh, everyone's going live, but it's about uh, you really uh, like the lives that share the value, right? And this, yeah, that's yeah. what IG live chats are all about. So guys, uh, this is as much as a conversation between the two of us. It's also with you. So go to the question little uh, symbol at the bottom and ask us your questions. So we are going to be talking about evolution during the pandemic. Now, this is a, a massive, massive subject. And even preparing for it, I was like, wow, I could talk about everything and anything. Um, it's a huge thing. It's a huge <laughs> subject to tackle. Uh, so we're going to try and, and fly through everything and try and touch on, on a few points. Um, but they, I want you to touch on, Joe, the difference between how the world has changed from March until now, 1st of a uh, May, and how the world will change post lockdown, post the pandemic, because I, I think those two periods are very different. Mm. So look, I think we, we are all going through this uh, transition. Um, no one was really prepared for this, so no one was actually ready for it, right? Um, and, yeah. and I don't just mean in terms of like small businesses and content creators, I mean, the world in general, like maybe China was ahead of time because I mean, they had their first case sometime last year, you know, and they've been dealing with it way before um, it hit the rest of the world. I think for us um, as, as, as a continent um, who number one has minimal resources, right? Uh, minimal accessibility to a lot of other things. We have, I, I feel like we've done quite well in our own um, sort of way. Uh, but I think the transition has been very, very interesting. Just looking at how your your like behavior has changed, you know, in 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 the way that you you do things. So your behavior with money, you know, your relationship with money has changed. Your relationship with things that you enjoyed that was outside your home has changed. You've started looking at things from a very uh, more reserved and cautious um, sort of sort of like angle. 
So I can't really speak about that change in detail, but what I do, um, what I've sort of like seen is that a lot of people have now seen that digital is the equalizer, right? We have all moved online. Why? Because now we need to find ways to communicate. We need to find ways to to sort of like have that experience with other people because now we are locked within the four walls of our home, right? Um, yeah. And I think from that point alone, it's going to spur quite quite a lot of a lot of changes. Um, post post lockdown, it's really just about what you have learned and what um, you perceive. I was, I was having a chat yesterday with a, with a GQ and I was saying that, look, right now is probably the best time for anyone to really be a bit more creative on how they get their products and their services into people's homes and into people's lives. Because um, even like with, with, um, with events, right? I've seen a lot of events happening online and I don't think they are using it to the full capability of what digital can do because digital is just the the bare minimum, right? What you want to do is create an experience in people's homes, in people's safe spaces, and create an experience in people's minds because that's what they will actually remember. And I think post lockdown, we're going to see a lot of brands really are moving towards trying to create experiences outside of um, their you know, uh, spaces outside of their offices because they've understood that, look, um, this thing might happen again in the next couple of years or um, months and we need to find ways to always stay c- communicated. So I think mm-hmm. post, post-lockdown post is, is really going to be about how can I get value into your space? How can I get value into your mind and how does it live in there? Even though we are using digital as sort of like the forefront, what am I doing in my space that still makes me feel a part of your brand, a part of your events, a part of um, what you're creating? Mm. No, I absolutely love that. So I think let's tackle this this massive subject from a macro point of view right down to the micro because you touched on on that that whole thing because it does go from affecting the people very high at top uh, and everyone in their individual life and the way they work and so on. So let's touch on government, right? So government has had to be extremely proactive. I think this is the most proactive maybe our government has Ever. been in a long time. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. Um, but it has had to force global leaders to be proactive, to um, really tackle issues, to tackle social issues, um, in a way that they never really have, right? Um, especially now in our time. Uh, so it's, it's just very, very interesting that we almost in a state of social, state socialism, yeah. uh, we find ourselves in state socialism, uh, as well as mutual aid between um, people helping each other. Uh, what are your points of view of how government has evolved and how government will change post the pandemic? Look, um... I honestly believe that government is probably doing this because um, the bigger part of the picture is that they rely on the workforce and they rely on us as the economy, right? Um, yeah. So that's that. Before before the whole um, notion of hey, we need to save lives and people need need to be safe. It's really just about we need to save money, right? That is mm. that is the biggest point. <clears throat> And Very interesting. They, 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 they're in a difficult sort of situation because we had three weeks of an actual lockdown where no one was actually working. And then they realized, oh shit, the economy is actually going to crumble, right? So now yeah. it's, it's, it's between balancing lives and balancing the income. That's why uh, we're going through different phases now, um, opening our specific industries because they've they have they have realized that. I'm happy that they have been proactive, um, and they've also basically told us that look, there's always been money. We we, we just not wanted to give it out to you guys, <laughs> which is cool. Uh, but yeah, look, I I'm really happy with with a lot of the the, the um, rules that they've that they sort of put in. I think um, just looking at what's been happening around the world in other African countries, we, we, we are really dealing with it 
quite well as South Africa um, because I personally didn't think we would have done this well. I just knew, look, if this thing hits us, it's going to be a mess because of how our country has always been run uh, because of the minimal resources um, and the access we have to specific things. So I was, I was really worried, um, but I have to like, I have to give it up to them. We've done really well. Um, post, post pandemic, I am not sure. I think our government has always been very, very traditional thinkers. You know, they've, they've, they've like, you would go to specific departments and they don't use digital, like they have to fill in things by paper, which increases the process of you applying for, let's say funding or getting a, a, a specific document. So it's always been quite, quite um, like very, very traditional. I think what, what our government needs to do post pandemic is really introduce the youth and let a lot of um, more young people into those spaces, help them make decisions and help them use digital as the equalizer. Because I think that's where a lot of things are going to move going forward. So for our government to really just be quite efficient, I think they have to take on more young people. They have to introduce um, <clears throat> more, more digital in, into their systems and their processes. So that's, that's, that's pretty much my thoughts um, on that topic. Look, I think you speak about uh, the economy and uh, the economy is something really a big pull factor, right? That the government has had to take into consideration. Um, so let's look at the economy and how that is going to evolve. Now, we already have seen a lot of retrenchments. We've already seen a lot of uh, unemployment, a lot of companies closing down um, due to the pandemic, due to the lockdown, post the pandemic post this lockdown period whenever that may be i i do think that we'll see a higher unemployment rate i do think that um unnecessary jobs would be lost so those jobs that aren't seen as necessary aren't seen as your essential services um as well as those businesses who that aren't essential that um are your unnecessary type of business. I think those people, those jobs and those businesses are at high risk. Yeah. Um, you know, we also, you speak about the physical to digital. So the economy, the corporate world uh, has had to move into digital, whether they've liked it or not. You know, yeah. I, in the digital marketing space, um, and I'm sure you as well, it's been quite interesting because previously, We've always been uh, telling clients, oh, no, you have to move to digital, you, you know, trying to force clients into digital. And here we are where the, the state of the world has pushed everyone into that digital space. So what are your thoughts on that unemployment and how people can, can uh, get ready for um, that sort of move, that sort of evolution? Mm. Look, um, we've, like you said, we've always been preaching you know, to brands and clients, look, you've, you've got to implement digital. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's quite sad now because the brands and the businesses that did not really look at digital as, as a means of communication and to get to their audience are struggling because now is a very difficult time to start building um, mm -hmm. that sort of um, platform, right? It's not too late, but it's a very difficult time to start only getting to digital and starting to learn to digital. Um, to learn digital because a lot of people are just in like panic mode um, and the the most important thing about why also we wanted a lot of people to move to digital has always been to be able to help them upskill themselves I think that that is the biggest thing right now um, if you are at home and you know that look your job might be at risk um, if you are in an industry where you know that look the pandemic is like hitting you firsthand. The most essential thing to do right now is to try and upskill yourself through anything that has to do with with digital, right? Um, I was I was having a chat with a friend of mine, and we were speaking about just in the creative space how how um, d digital has sort of affected us just before the pandemic, right? Where we have um, platforms like your Canva and your Wix or Squarespace that allows clients to build their websites without coming to a Joe who, who is 
a developer, right? So how do I upskill myself and shift so that I don't get hit and I don't have clients? I need to start building platforms like that, right? So um, it's really about moving ahead of the curve and staying ahead of it. So a lot of what we need to do now in terms of our jobs is to find the sweet spot and, and how digital plays a role in whatever that I do, right? Either it's through e-commerce, either it's through creating a platform that still um, is able to, to um, give your audience that specific service that you are offering. I think that'll be quite a big thing. With regards to the economy, um, I think now is like, we need to save as much as we can, unfortunately, because it's going to be, I think everyone is thinking about right now and surviving right now, which is not a bad thing, but also we need to think about the effects that this thing will have um, post the pandemic, right? Because the economy will not get back on its feet as soon as lockdown is over. It's gonna take a long time, especially because it's the global yeah. economy that is feeling this pain. Um, cash flow will not be easy. Um, money, will not be safe. money won't be circulating as easy um, as it was before um, this, this this sort of phase. So right now is really not the time to spend or invest unless you've got the means. I mean, there's big businessmen who say the best time to buy is when there's blood on the streets, right? Um, yeah. Never faced a good a good crisis. So if you are going to invest, if you are going to put money somewhere, be sure about it. Do a lot of the research of where that industry will will be after after the pandemic. It might not be accurate information, but at least it will give you sort of like a a deciding um, factor of where you should put your money. Uh, but the best advice I've gotten from a lot of the people that are in the finance space is to try and save as much as you can. If you are still able to make money at this time, when it comes in just to really like put that away because post pandemic is going to be very difficult for things to get back to how they used to be. Sure. So I want to be, um, devil's advocate here and you know you speak about moving your business as much as you can on a in a digital way or learning digital skills um as well as saving money but you know let's look at the context of where we live right south africa is a place where there's massive inequalities people are um you know they're going from paycheck to paycheck a lot of people don't have access to digital to um, enough data to be able to move into that digital world. So, you know, what is your, your, your point of view with, on that side when someone doesn't have the tools to upskill themselves um, or can't save money because every little cent is going to feed in their family? Look, I think it's twofold, right? It's, it's, it's a responsibility that we sort of need to impose on ourselves as um, digital creators to be able to get into those spaces that, and, and actually teach people how to use these platforms and understand what's going on, number one. Um, the other fault is, is, is for our government to actually take action and understand where the world is going. I think they play a big role um, in, in just stabilizing our economy. If they are able to you know, hire, I don't know, um, 20 celebrities to go read to kids, right, who are in rural areas or disadvantaged spaces and offer them equipment and offer them um, tablets or whatever it could be. I think they, they can play a really big role in helping creators like ourselves um, because I think also it creates a very great opportunity for the economy to keep growing. You know, if they are able to hire people like you and I to go into the spaces and teach digital skills, we are not only making an income, but they are also um, growing and feeding a generation of people that will actually support the economy moving forward, right? It doesn't have to be expert skills. It could just be yeah. soft skills that, that um, we've learned. So get, get, get young kids to be able to learn how to code, um, build apps, you know, build systems or softwares and stuff like that. Because I think this pandemic is also making us realize just how much 
digital is important and how mm -hmm. there's so many other courses that we are learning from a very young age that don't are not really going to aid us for the world that's that is to come so i think it's really about two folds there um as a community as content creators as people that have means to access the digital and and be able to 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 uh, understand how these platforms work we need to be in a collaborative space where we can be able to assist our society it doesn't have to be ten thousand people it could be five people um it could be two people but you are doing something right and i yeah, think yeah. government will then play a very big role because they've got a lot of the financial backing um to, to be able to help us execute sort of these uh, programs yeah no i love what you say you know about the education and and taking skilled individuals um who know what they're talking about and letting them educate uh, yeah. the youth, right? And letting them educate um, other people who don't have access. Uh, I think that is such a, a very interesting topic. Um, and, you know, the, the topic of education as well um, from how it needs to change. Because I do think that the pandemic is going to take out unnecessary subjects and really start replacing these unnecessary subjects and as well as it, it will take out sports and culture, um, but it will change the way we look at education, right? Um, because as I said, not everyone has access to the e-learning. The private schools are still continuing. School is open at the moment, but not everyone uh, has that access. Yeah. So I think education will definitely change. And I really love uh, how you say the government must get skilled individuals and place them into the communities um, and, and into. I think, I think one one other thing that um, I feel that the government is sort of waking up to, but I've not really felt the impact is understanding that entrepreneurship can actually be one of the things that can aid unemployment. Right? There's there's so many of us who are, are creatives, who are freelancers who are really skilled or who are self-taught and have been able to build sustainable small businesses, right, that have survived. I mean, I've been running my business returning four years in June, right? And we started off nothing. We literally started off with a Facebook page. And we've been able to work with so many brands. Where we've been able to build ourselves as personal brands to, like, this to like the stage right and i think yeah. if, if our government can look at businesses like you and i as small businesses that are actually surviving and 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 changing the ways that society or the communities work and really back us we then are able to get other creatives other freelancers who have not been who have not been able to actually build something sustainable but just you know go from door to door and give them something that they can rely on every single month we are slowly starting to eradicate um unemployment right because mm -hmm. the thing about the thing about uh, uh, a lot of the numbers that regard to our unemployment is that it's actually skilled people it's people that actually have skills it's not that they are unemployable they actually have specific skills and um they 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 can actually do a specific job but there aren't enough businesses uh, there aren't enough spaces for them to actually get into so it's not that um there isn't a need for an engineering degree. Maybe there's, the engineering companies have retrenched because they can't afford it. But if we get someone else that can actually build an engineering company that is sustainable and hire all these other people, then uh, we are slowly starting to, to, to eradicate um, those numbers. So I think um, just, just on that um, note of a lot of courses are going to move away. I'm really hoping that um, entrepreneurship even on a small scale is introduced from a very young age because I think it's very essential. Mm -hmm. And I think also money management um, with, you know, taxes and VAT and um, running a business and those basic uh, financial um, skills one needs to live as an adult, right? Yeah. Uh, I feel like that really does need to um, be implemented and um, yeah, I completely, completely agree with you. And I, I want to now jump into the individual evolution, right? Uh, so we've spoken about uh, all the way from the top. Now, let's bring it down to the I, the you and me, right? So um, socially, 
now we all been socially distancing, trying to stay at home if we can. Um, Post pandemic, do you think that people are just going to go back to the way we used to socialize, go out, go to clubs, go to bars? Do you think that's going to change? I definitely look personally. Um, <laughs> I know you want to go to the clubs. I, I know, I know. But... <laughs> look, listen, listen. After the pandemic, right? I personally don't think I'll just jump back into things like they never happened. Uh, mm-hmm. It will really be about trying to assess your environment as much as you can, um, because a lot of behaviors have changed. Right? We, I think. We become more consciously hygienic. Uh, we 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 become more consciously aware of um, the people and the spaces around us. So I'm I'm I will at least give it a week or two just to like you know make sure that look this thing is really okay. Um, but one of the things I really think will happen is that spaces are going to change. You know um, how many people they allow into specific spaces. So even 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 places like clubs, I think there will be a limit to how many people can actually you know be in that specific space. I think a lot of the rules and the regulations of social distancing are going to stay. They might be very subtle, uh, but we are never going to be the same. Like we, I I personally am always going to be very conscious of the spaces and the people around me moving forward i will um, i'll probably get a lot of anxiety from being in crowded spaces um it's like i'm really going to be scared to be um in crowded spaces my behavior has changed i've been thinking about so many other things uh but most essentially i think spaces spaces are going to change so um one of the reasons i'm saying this is even now when i go for like an essential run, um, there's a queue outside the shopping uh, uh, space where one person goes in where only when one person comes out, right? I think rules yeah. like that um, are going to be still put in place, but very subtle. Um, and yeah, yeah, even coffee shops and inventing spaces are going to change. I mean, we were talking with my manager of how we think, look, as much as these things are going to affect the spaces, but they're also going to help us create better experiences. So let's say, for, for, for an example, um, you host this event, right? And what you do with that event is you now break the event into four different sections where per two hours, only 50 or 100 people can access that specific space. So what that does now is that, cool, I get into the space, I get to enjoy the space, and then when my time is up, I move to a different section of that event where my time is up and I keep moving. And what that does is you are, you are experiencing four different parts of the event, but you as an event manager, you are then able to not only have 500, 500 people uh, attend your event, but you can have 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 people because they, they are all slowly moving through the event and and to get to experience um, the event in in its entirety. So I think concepts like that are going to be introduced. They're going to help us create more experiences to experience things at a much um, better and deeper level. So um, yeah, that's that's, that's just sort of how I see it. But I don't think anyone will just be running back into normal life um, as soon as as soon as this is this is that. Look, I, so I, I'm in two minds about what it. What do you right? think? So I feel that definitely socially we have changed to this point. Um, you know, our hygiene habits have changed. I've never had sanitized myself so much in my life before. Right. Wow. Um, <laughs> but you know, I think that, that everyone, is socially conscious now um, more than they've ever been before. And they will take that moving forward. But why I'm divided on this subject is because two things. So I went on an essential run yesterday and the shop that I went to was preparing to open up their clothing section for uh, level four, uh, where they're allowed to sell winter clothing. 
the queuing um, outside the store was non-existent anymore because they were prepping for level four. Mm -hmm. um, the hand sanitizing at the front of the door, it was there, but not everyone had to use it. Um, the social distancing when you're queuing, also not there. So there was, I've and it wasn't that. just the store. It was I've the people that. as well. Um, Say again. And I'm saying, I've noticed that, like, there's people yeah. who are not actually really taking social distancing as serious as it should. I mean, I, yeah. I was in the line trying to get groceries and there was someone literally breathing down my neck. Like, the dude was, like, yeah. literally behind me. And I'm like, you know, what the hell? So, um, yeah. it's, 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 it's really up to us as a community and, and, and a society to actually implement these rules because government can only say so much. You know, they could yeah. send you a thousand SMSs throughout the month and it's really up to you to decide on what you are going to do. So what, yeah. so, so what are like your thoughts with regards to space like that? Do you just not go there anymore? Or do you just look? I'm gonna fight and try to protect myself as much as I can because clearly it's 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 every man for himself out here right now. Yeah, yeah. Look, so I want to read two comments that have just come through that I think are so relevant to my answer. Right. So Salu says soccer games will never be the same. No, Dude. you need to play tennis from now on. You can Dude. play tennis. The one person's on the one side of the field of the courts and then the other person and then you never you know you never have to come into contact Look, i think um, i think we just need to find a vaccine for this thing hey eh? yeah definitely definitely we, some uh, sometimes d says some people will never understand the concept of personal space or social distancing completely completely agree if we look at cape town this morning the promenade uh, joy i don't know did you see the pictures of the promenade yeah today it was crazy. so everyone for themselves right they're like well i'm gonna exercise not gonna take the social distancing seriously so that's why you know i'm i'm like are things socially going to change um there's some more comments that have come through will we change or will we go back to our old ways that's the the big debate you know i think some things are going to change some things not um yeah. glam uh better Glam Betterston Bone uh, says, it's not the matter of understanding the concept social distancing. People are just tired. Uh, People are just tired. Says, are, you, are, you, are you tired of protecting yourself? Are you tired of staying alive? You know, that is, that is literally the question. And that's how yeah. I've felt in the past couple of weeks where I'm like, people are getting worked up because other people are not practicing safety measures i i understand that because they are engaging other people's lives right but at, at the end of the day i'm also like look i'm at home i'm safe i'm taking care of myself and my family and i'm keeping myself safe if you guys want to go out there and actually endanger your lives then all right go ahead and i'm not being ignorant of the fact that some people have to go outside because if they don't go outside they won't have um, food on their plates sure right so i'm sure. not ignorant of that fact uh, that some people just cannot stay at home. But if if you can, please just, like, do it, you know? It's like, save yourself. Mm -hmm. Save lives. That's, that's, that's mm -hmm. literally it. Yeah. No, I think that's, that's really, um, really important and, and a great point. Shatin says, uh, people are still going to mosques um, because it is the religious period at the moment. Um, and, but there are boundaries for everyone's safety. So I know Greek Easter was also about two weeks ago. Um, and that's why I've, I've put the IG chats on hold for the past week. Um, so there we weren't allowed, uh, to go to church. Um, the Greek Orthodox church is closed yeah. internationally. So, uh, what we did is we were live streaming um, different churches ar across the world, which was really amazing to see how religion also has evolved. So I, I'm glad yeah. to hear that there are, um, you know, precautions for safeties at mosques. But again, it's what Joe says. It's about saying, okay, well, how am I keeping myself and my family safe during this time? How am I practicing socially distancing, social distancing? Right. Um, so, Salut. So, there's a lot of comments that have come through. We've, we've touched a nerve here. Um, 
<laughs> Once the virus goes away, we will go back to normal as long as the virus is still as long as the virus is still around, this is our new norm. Um sanitizer yeah. one thousand times per person a day, keeping distance, yeah. So yeah, you know, course. it's um, the world with sorry, vaccine the versus the world without. Yeah, sorry to cut you off. Um I definitely sure. think that um look Pandemics have always shifted societies, right? If you look at the history of uh, pandemics that have happened in the past, they've always shifted societies. The reason why we've got soap and detergents and whatnot it was because germs were, dis were discovered, right? Bacteria was discovered. And um, the reason why we've got vaccines is because we've, uh, a, a flu was discovered, right? It doesn't mean that these things essentially go away. They just we just yeah. have to co like coexist with them. So I think yeah. the, the the same will happen um, with with COVID nineteen. We we will find ways of surviving, but it will just be something that we would have to constantly experience throughout um, our our lives going forward, and we are just going to adapt based on what um, the the cause of COVID nineteen will have. So. Um, People going back to normal, yes, but it will have a lot of changes uh, due to what COVID-19 has already done. Yeah, no, I, I completely, completely agree with you. Um, uh, you know, the flu is still around, there's yeah. um, still yeah. swine flu, there's still Ebola, uh, yeah. but, you know, coping with those flus has become, uh, all those viruses has become better. Um, so not to say there's a cure for it, but as humans, we've evolved to adapt, to survive yeah. with it. So, um, yeah, I, I agree with that. And it's not like it's going to go away. They even say that in China, they will have a second um, infection curve uh, happening later on in the year because they've gone and they've opened up um, their economy, uh, you know, um, too quickly. Uh, so some people do suspect that there will be another infection curve happening. Um, there was a comment, Nandini says, um, everyone's getting excited about restaurants being opened. Uh, she's not going to come to that party. She's not ordering food until level I zero. I not the same person. Okay. Why? I, I, I am really, like, I'm really scared. Um, especially yeah. because we've, we I've seen stories online of like, hey, a Woolworths or an engine um, checkers or checkers, you know, was infected and they had to close down the stores. It's the same thing, right? You are going to get people that are going to practice this um, safety precautions, wash their hands, make sure they clean, and you're going to get people that are going to be smart and think, no, I'm fine, I'm clean, you know, I don't have to wash my hands, and then they miss, and then they touch your food to get it packaged, it gets to you, and guess what? You're, you, you, you're infected. I mean, you can't sanitize your burger bag now, can you? Right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really, I'm like, I'm not ordering food. I don't care if it's a Tasha's or whatever fancy restaurants. I really think that we just need to really be careful because um, it's not safe for anyone right now. Oh. Look, if anyone looks back, if anyone looks back to Cape Town during the the water shortage um, about uh, two years ago, um, a lot of stomach bugs uh, were going around. Everyone was getting um, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, food sickness, food poisoning. That's the word. Yeah. Um, during that time, because people weren't practicing proper hygiene. Um, and, you know, bugs were just going around Cape Town. And I was in Cape Town at that time, and it was, it was terrible. Um, now, with that being said, we're adding COVID into the story, right? Now, COVID is not something that you can physically see uh, yeah. this person has, right? It's like cancer. It's like HIV. It's not a visual thing. So uh, you can have COVID and work in one of the food stores, and then only re uh, get symptoms 14 days later after your most contagious period, right? Now, does that mean you can contaminate uh, the food? The delivery driver then takes that food and contaminates, you know, 
20 plus houses and it's not just one individual because one person can be ordering for five people in their household yeah and then those five people get sick uh one of those people then go to work because they're an essential service it's i don't know it's a mess, mess. It's a mess. It is a mess. I don't know what we will do. Um, you know, but they like Nando's isn't delivering and I'm sad about that. Burger King is delivering. So, I mean, I, I am craving their chips. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. not going to lie. I, I'm be, craving their chips. I think we all have cravings and um, I, I wanted to like get a burger this morning and I just thought about it and I'm like, Maybe it's too early. Like, let me l- let me hold it out for like yeah. maybe two or three more weeks because yeah. I mean, I've already gone without it for over a month now, and I'm not dead. You right? can survive. I've I've noticed how my body has changed. I've noticed how much money I've saved because, um, like, look, my industry and my work requires me to always be working. So you work so hard sometimes you don't have time to get back home and cook. So what do you do? You order online while you're still working because you want to keep you know, delivering. Um, so, yeah, look, I'm, my anxiety has just, like, peaked on a lot of things lately. And yeah. I'm, I'm just really, like, trying to look after myself. So the whole food delivery and essentials um, sort of space is very tricky right now because we are literally not safe. And not just with deliveries, <laughs> even just going to the store and buying groceries or whatever, like, you you really don't know. Yeah, no, completely. So I want to talk about, um, you touch on uh, your anxiety getting really high during this time. Now, you know, our physical um, uh, actions, uh, or our phys- how we are physically, right? We're no longer going to gym. So we there's, everyone now is gymming at home. Not everyone. Some people are, are doing it greatly. Uh, are really being successful at it. Some of us, not so much, you know. But also, there's also that mental side of it, you know, that physical health, that mental health. Um, that definitely takes a toll. And and yeah. you saying that what the toll is uh, for you is your anxiety has gone up, right? So, um, you know, how do you feel that people can get on top of those things to, to, so that the anxiety doesn't go up? Uh, um, out the roof or uh, they can cope with the fact that they can't go to gym or they're not as physical as they used to be. So, so the biggest, the biggest thing um, for me is that I've just had to accept that this is something I cannot change. Mm. Um, By mere fact of that, it means that spending so much time and energy on it and trying to figure it out actually aids to increasing my, my anxiety. I remember the, yeah. the, the, the first week and a half, I, I, I lost my mind. I did not understand how I could not be able to access the spaces that I enjoy. I could not be at the office. I could not be able to, to, to see my friends and, and, and loved ones, right? It really played a good trick on me. Um, and after going through the whole episode, that's when I came to, to the realization that, look, this thing, like, I can't do anything about it. It is what it is, yeah. right? Um, on top of that, I, I, I need to understand that it won't last. It's here for a short time. And what I need to be very cognizant of that is I need to survive it. I need to be able to come out of it and still be able to create, still be able to do the, the things that I enjoy, right? And and it's not easy. It's not easy getting to that point. That's why I think as community, as society, as people who are able to, to interact online, we sort of need to be, um, like, we need to help each other get through this, you know? Um, even if it's doing lives like this where we get to talk about this thing and communicate because you, you, you might not have anyone in the house to actually speak to these things about right to, to just discuss understand where they are how they feeling and how they coping you know so um yeah that's 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 pretty much what i've been doing i've i've gone back into doing the things that make my soul happy so i started um cooking a lot more i started painting again i started drawing um creating music you know things that really make me happy things that make me calm mm-hmm. um things, mm-hmm. things that keep keep me sane right because yeah um 
I can't really work. Lost a lot of clients. I've lost some yeah. of my client deals that were supposed to, to to keep paying me throughout the year, especially because of the, mm-hmm. the alcohol ban. And, and and I've been working with alcohol companies as an as an influencer. So it has affected each and every one of us, right? Whether you mm-hmm. are a billionaire or whether you are middle class or low class, how however you look at it, everyone has taken a knock based on where they are in their lives. So, so um, you, like, you're not going through this alone. That was the one mm. for, 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 for me. I'm just speaking to, like, other entrepreneurs and other creatives, and, like, we're all going through the same things, right? So that's, that's pretty much how I have, like, been living, how I've been getting through this um, difficult time. Yes, money is becoming a stress. It will be a stress sooner or later, but yeah. I think I'm a firm believer in life will always work itself out. I don't yeah. think we're going to get to a point where you are completely broke, you can't pay bills, you, you don't have food, you die in your house. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, life life will work itself out. We just yeah. need to like hang in there and really just like try and survive this as much as we can. That's, that, that's me mentally um, and emotionally where I am and I've been. Yeah. How about you? Look, how, uh, how have you been dealing with it? So, I, yeah, also in the beginning it was extremely stressful, lost uh, gigs, lost clients, um, same boat as you. Um, you know, I was actually meant to uh, leave for Cape Town for a brand um, deal. Um, the day that uh, the the before the lockdown that that a national emergency was was uh, put into place, yeah. um, and everything got cancelled last like last minute, and it was really stressful. Um, but then, you know, it's about as you say, how do you survive? What do you need as an individual oh. to say? Okay, well, this is what I need to do. So I threw myself into starting to exercise at home because I don't exercise at all. Pre-lockdown, uh, during lockdown, I'm doing it now, you know. Um, so I knew that that's something that I need to to start. So that uh, is what I have started. I'm really happy that I have been doing that. Um, but also it's about, okay, so now how do I adapt? How do I yeah. evolve? And that's what this conversation is about, right? How do you evolve as an individual to survive this period and to survive post this period. Um, and I think that's, that's so, so important. Um, so I want to tackle some of the questions because we're going to end soon and some of the comments. Uh, so I'm going to pop this up here. So it speaks about schools that have been using online features before COVID or during COVID. Um, will they start using it post the pandemic? as as a as an economic sort of um investment right they need to look at the long game cool we are going to put billions into getting all schools online but what is that going to do for our economy in the next five in the next 10 in the in the next 15 years right Mm -hmm. we are going to have skilled individuals that that are going to understand how to push our country and our society forward so they need to look at it from that angle and not look at it as we are wasting money or we're trying to implement resources where they don't really need need to be. So I'm, I really hope that a lot of schools uh, do move online and government has to play a really big role in that. Like we need them to play that role. <clears throat> no, I love that. Uh, so Salu says money is a stress. Money stress can be uh, quite something, right? Money makes the world move, right? It makes the cogs, it makes you survive, yeah, makes you the truth. Um, I think you, you touched on it a little bit earlier uh, about saving, trying to save as much as possible. You know, our traveling habits have changed. Our spending habits have changed. Our digital consumption has changed forever. Um, whether it, it will be, it'll go a little bit back to normal after, but I think, we will save now. We know what saving is. We know where we're wasting money. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think that that's massively important to, to know where does my money go? Um, and how do I save? Because I'm now not driving to work anymore. 
post pandemic you might get the opportunity to work more remotely yeah. Yeah. because you've done it you you have been going through through those growing pains um forced growing pains but you're going through it right uh so joe i want to ask you because our time is almost up what are your final um uh, views on the evolution of covid-19 um i've got i've got mixed mixed feelings i think for people that have not been able to access um digital you know i uh, don't really have the means for people that are in less privileged um areas where look all they know is to be out on the streets or sell something you know make something i'm really heartbroken because th- this change um like the people above us are the like th- those people in those rural spaces they are the last people to be thought about right people yeah. people that are um way ahead of us or above us in terms of class or status they are really thinking about themselves and how to save themselves and i guess it's a basic human instinct right we all want to just yeah. survive to some point you need to put yourself first right so i'm um, i'm really heartbroken about about people like that at the same time i'm i'm happy that this this pandemic happened because what it will do for society and the culture is that it will help us create better experiences it will it will help us move and understand digital and how far we can push it much 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 better um it yeah. has to create create us to be more creative you know how do i stay relevant how do i still put out content that people can engage with within the four walls of my house you know um how do i make money how do i make sure that this brand or this service still gets into my audience and stuff like that so it it has done a lot of uh, of uh, shifts you know it has it will push a lot of corporate companies to start looking at how else do we make our workers work more remotely so people are probably going to be saving more money um they're going to be probably be safer because there's going to be less people on the streets so less accidents you know this this yeah. there's so many other things that um the pandemic has shifted which is going to be better for us as human beings better for our society better for nature um but at the same time there's 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 also people that are really going to um be hit very hard by this um so yeah. i'm i've been mixed feelings yeah. uh, but being on the digital side i'm really happy for the some of the changes that um it will implement going forward So Joe, uh before Instagram kicks us off, I just want to say thank you so much for joining this live chat. I hope you will join me on an IG live chat in the future. Uh, I think there's a so lot of topics much. we can I talk about. I really enjoyed this, man. I I really awesome. had a great time. The comments were lit. Uh thank yes. you for everyone that, that that was watching and thank you for having me, bro. Really. Yeah. No, no, only a pleasure. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you check out uh both mine and Joe's uh profile. and this will be live on my stories for the next 24 hours and I'll try and post it onto my feed as well um I and for my people say. amazing creator um he's doing some really cool stuff so please give him give him a follow he's having great conversations with so many so many other people <laughs> in the industry and it's really valuable content that is worth your data thank you man thank you really appreciate it everyone be safe and chat soon